they having breakfast, you are also talking to someone. And you are networking.
We have about eight more minutes. At the top of level, we'll start. Thank you. Hello, I'm sure we are all enjoying our breakfast. I'd just like to remind us that we have about four minutes more. As a matter of fact, three minutes more. Three minutes more. Thank you.
Hello. Can we begin to return to our seats, please? Can we begin to return to our seats? will begin to return back to our seats please thank you Okay, please, ladies and gentlemen, please, can we all um, come back to our seats? Um, this event is timed, and we don't want to overshoot our time. Please, um, we want everybody to please go back to their seats. Please go back to your seats. The next working will continue after this seminar. Please, everybody. Please come to your seat. You can actually take your coffee. You can take your biscuits to your seat. Please, you can take your coffee. You can take your biscuits to your seat. Please, let's all go to our seats. Please, please, let's all go to our seats. Let's all go to our seats. I want to say a big thank you to everyone that served us. Thank you so much. Please, let's go to our seats. Let's go to our seats so that we can continue this program immediately. Wasiu, please, can you just turn down the... Wasiu, please, can you turn down the... Can you turn down the volume of your... of your music? Please, let's all have our seats. But see you, please, just turn it down so that we continue immediately. Thank you very much. I'd like if we have silence in the house, please. Thank you. We're young professionals. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Could you give yourself a round of applause? I said silent and everywhere went silent. Thank you. Thank you. It's interesting. We'll go straight to business. And so, I must remind you guys that this is a diocesan put program. It's a quarter two program put together by the Diocese of Lagos. I'd like to invite... Mr. YPF, a man that breathes YPF, he sleeps YPF, he drinks YPF, and he eats YPF. Ladies and gentlemen, the first day I met this man, so humble, and he's so loaded. 
I'd like you to put your hand together for my own Mr. YPF engineer, Ola Dotsun, Ola Dele. He is the best person to come and give us the charge for YPF this morning. Please keep clapping for him. He's so humble. Thank you very much, everyone. I will not take our time. I know the, our Hebrew MCs, they have welcomed you. So I'll just simply say, good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is with great excitement that I welcome you to the quarter two program of the Young Professionals Fellowship of the Diocese of Lagos. On behalf of our diocese, missioner, and visioner of this great movement, His Grace, the Most Reverend Humphrey Bamishi Biolumakai, I say welcome to everyone, and I pray that today's program will impact you positively and put you on the right track to greatness in Jesus' name. I'm always full of joy when I see us coming together as a fellowship. And this is because our coming together simply reaffirms that our church has a future. As a matter of fact, we are a major stakeholders in the now of our church, and also we are certainly the future of our church. It is with this understanding in mind that our diocesan and missioner inaugurated this movement. Yes, I call it movement because that's what our diocesan likes to call it. It's a movement. We are a group of young adults between the ages of 20 and 55 years who are pure professionals, either with white collar job or blue collar job. We are not a youth fellowship. As some have erroneously defined us. As a matter of fact, one of our major tasks is to mentor the youth in our church. I will not bother you with reading out of our objective and vision as you can see them clearly written on the journal, on the, I mean, on the summit material that has been given to you. But permit me to read out the mission statement, which says our mission is to build a fellowship of young professionals who are passionate about God, unhindered in their love for God, who find the expression of worship in the Anglican communion and shine as light in the world. And shine as light of the world in their spheres of influence. We are people of influence, and that's our mission statement. This statement has been our guiding principle since our diocese inaugurated this movement officially at the diocese level on the 2nd October 2021. In less than one year of this movement in our diocese, God has done great things in our midst, and we are very certain that we do much more. At the diocese level, today's program is the third we are hosting this year. We have two programs in the quarter one. The first one being an hybrid program, that means which allows for physical and online attendance. The second one was purely an online program. Why this third one is also both physical and online. As a matter of fact, we are on Lagoon Television as we speak at the moment. So, I want to passionately appeal to all young professionals between the ages of 20 and 55 in our diocese to actively join this movement. The now and the future of our church lies on us. We are not just the future of the church. We are the now of the church and the future of the church. Come, let us build our Jerusalem together. I need to make this clarification. The young in our name does not connote those who are just starting their career or business. As a matter of fact, we have CEOs, we have MDs, we have top executives of big companies and establishments in our midst. And we are equally blessed to have those who are steadily just growing their career and businesses among us. The young in our name simply means we are a group of people who are in their most productive year energetic, and full of life. Hence, our motto in YPF is even young, purposeful, and flourishing. Therefore, if you are flourishing in your career or business, and you are in your productive years, energetic, full of life, and you fall within this age bracket, 
you are certainly and automatically our member. We are just waiting for you to become an active member. And if you ask me, now is the time for you to become that active member that we are talking about. May I at this juncture say a big thank you to everyone who has actively taken up their role in this movement. Men and women who are doing great work for their par at their parishes and also at the diocesan level. You will certainly not miss your reward in Jesus' name. May I use this opportunity to inform you about our quarter three program, which is about giving back to our community. As professionals, we have decided to embark on some projects within our space as a way of giving back and impacting our church. We count on every one of our members to make this happen. I need to let you know that YPF, we don't seek to drop budget from the diocese. We don't. We are professional and uh, we know we are up to the task. I will trust you. I trust you. You will be willing to support us when the time comes and we will reach out to you concerning this project we have in mind. I want to at this point appreciate everyone who planned this today's program. The committee was chaired by one of our ambassadors who incidentally was the immediate past president of YPF of this church in person of Mr. Tube Modebe. I want to say thank you. Okay, this committee did a beautiful job. They did not just plan this program. I need you to listen to this. They did not just plan this program. They also went ahead to put their money into financing this program. Please, I will ask every member of this committee to stand up. Please, I want you to stand up wherever you are. Every member of the committee that planned this that plan this program. Okay? You can see them. Please see them at the back. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I need to put it on record. Everything you have seen us taking this money, everything, anything and everything you have taken this money was sponsored by one of these committee members. She took it up completely <laughs> at no cost to us at the diocese level. So these are the kind of people that come together. They don't sit down to plan how to spend money. They bring out their money to sponsor and finance the program. We also want to say a big thank you to the host church who gave us a sum of 800,000 Naira through the host YPF. We are sincerely grateful. If I want to continue greeting, it will take our time. I want, a lot of people have been supporting this vision and I need to be honest with you, a lot of people. And we are already concluding in our mind that by December this year, we will go ahead to honor some of those people who have been supporting us. But I think I need to put it on record here that Mrs. Okikiolu, of particular of this church also, she has always been very supporting to us. Anytime we have a program, she's always there for us. At times, we are the one that dictate how much we want to we, want, we know what we want, and we tell her what we can pay to achieve what we want. And she has always been saying, as long as the things of God, just go ahead. So thank you very much, ma'am, if you are listening to us. We are not unaware of the challenges that the young professionals face in their effort to balance the work and family demands. We have seen many people being torn apart because of these demands and pressures. It is because of this obvious challenge that we have carefully chosen our topic today, work-life balance, a Christian perspective. This topic will be discussed by two eminently qualified children of God who are at the very peak of their career and who are also blessed with a loving family. You can see them. Can you please put your hands together for them? They will be sharing with us how they were able to balance their work and family life when they were growing their career and even now when they are still doing even, even now, when they are at an available position in their career, because they are still climbing up, as a matter of fact, God is still lifting them to a higher ground. So they will be telling us how they were able to do it to this point, and what they are still doing at the moment, because we know we we'll celebrate another level of growth in their lives very soon by the grace of God. You will hear their profiles. You, you are going to listen to their profiles shortly. So permit me to just say at this moment, welcome to them. And I want to say welcome to this program. You will listen to their profile yourself. And then you will understand what I'm talking about. We are blessed in our church. Can you put your hands together for yourself? 
Once again, I welcome all. I welcome you all to this program. And I say thank you for coming. I remain your friend, Dotson Oladeji. Thank you very much. Is that what you want to do for our own coordinator? Thank you very much. You know, in the course of the week, I was a bit down. I had malaria. And because I do a lot of speaking jobs, I, I was actively on Clubhouse. And on Wednesday, I had a talk with the singles of talking about godly advice, godly wisdom for relationship. And my husband looked at me. I was having this nagging headache. I held my hand and I was talking. I was speaking and my husband was like, don't you think you're taking too much job on? I was like, what have I done? I've not, I've not done anything. Where am I self? Me that I'm still like this. Don't worry. When I get there, you can now say this thing. And today I told, when I, I, I was going to tell my husband, I told my husband that I was coming for another speaking engagement. My husband was like, don't you think you're taking on too much? You should rest. I said, don't worry. I'm going to go and listen to how to balance this thing that you're talking about. Don't worry. When I come back, I'll be better for it. So today we're going to be having the privilege. For those of you that might be like my husband, that thinks that I'm taking on too much. When we get home, I know, I know what to tell him when I get home. So I am really so looking forward to, you know, this discussion. Um, and so if you are not following our page already, if you are not following our page, I'm not following the YPF page on Facebook, on Instagram, I'm not following Lagoon TV. Go and check your flyers. I need you to follow that page and not just follow the page. Give us a like so that you get notification as soon as there is any program for us. Please do that. The next two seconds. I can't see anybody bringing out their phones. Please bring out your device. Oh, you have done it. Please give yourself a round of applause. Thank you very much. We need to follow our own page. Thank you. Yes, we're getting there. We are getting there. I'd like to invite a very special person, somebody I admired. The first time I saw him, I was secretly admiring him. I'm sure you, you must be wondering who that person is. Do you know who the person is? No, okay. I'd like to invite Mr. Adebowale Eboda to come and give us the citation of our special guest, Mrs. Frances Omoraye. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'm actually blushing. Please par pardon me. Uh, let me just put my mask into my, into my pocket. I try to be as compliant as possible. I'm a compliance person. <laughs> I stand on existing protocols, and I say a big welcome to, to our guests to our guest speakers. I'll be reading out the citation of Mrs. Frances Omarwai. I hope I pronounced it well, ma'am. Frances Edelao Omarwai is first a child and servant of God who believes that all men have been given leeway to share intimacy with Abba Father through finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. She also believes that any Christian can relate individually and purposefully with God Almighty through a living relationship with the Holy Spirit. She is a firm believer in kingdom building as a, pros as a panache to nation building. Hence her dictum, if we get kingdom building right, then our nation will be transformed effortlessly. Frances Maurai is also a supply chain professional with approximately 30 years experience in the oil and gas industry. Yeah, I heard someone saying, wow, yeah. <laughs> Can't you see the grace of God on our life? <laughs> Her career mix in management capacity Traverse the fields of supply chain management, procurement, contracting, vendor management, post-contract award management, supplier relationship management, 
and cost optimization, external affairs and government relations, and security and community relations management. There's a whole lot going out there. <laughs> Frances commenced her career with Ashland Oil in 1992. Where were you all in 1992? <laughs> and progressed to Adax Petroleum Development Company in 1998. And thereafter, Eland Exploration and Production Company in 2018, from where she moved to join Amni recently in 2001 as the Deputy General Manager contracts and procurement. She has a degree in political science, a postgraduate master's in business administration, and an LLM master's in petroleum law and policy. Frances is married to Mr. Peters Omar Ruay, and they, are both, and they both have four children. They are all avid golfers, and believe that doing all things together create required platforms for real life teaching experiences which reinforces godly values. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Frances Omorai. I was wondering if that was me he was talking about. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you don't know how far God has taken you until you take a listen. And um, then you really know that God has really, really brought you from somewhere. Praise the Lord. You know, it's really awesome to be here. I was telling um, the vicar of this church that I got married in this church. I um, started my youth ministration in this church. So I knew every corner of this church. But when I came into there, I did not recognize anywhere because they had broken down the church I was used to where I got married in. So I can't show my children where I got married in. And then I'll have another church. We thank God. Um, you know, this is a Christian seminar. It's not like the seminar out there. And because I have this thing with the Holy Spirit, Abba Father, I always want to worship in his presence. So please, I will appreciate if we just stand up to worship the Most High God. I want you to tell Abba Father to touch you this morning. Tell Abba Father you want to experience him. Tell Abba Father you want an encounter with him. Even as we go through what we are going to do right now. Touch my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Touch my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Lay your hands on me, dear Lord. Breathe on me. Lay your hands on me, dear Lord. Breathe on me. Let's take it again. Touch my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Touch me, Lord. Touch my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Oh, Lord, lay your hands on me, dear Lord, breathe on me. Lay your hands, lay your hands on me, dear Lord, breathe on me. Oh, yes, Holy Spirit, the owner of life, Abba Father, breathe on us, O oh Lord. As we share your word, 
as we share experiences and as we interact and engage through your grace, O oh Lord, let there be impactation, O oh Lord. Let there be understanding, O oh Lord. Take us to a new level. Let us encounter your presence, O oh Lord. And let us move to a new dimension in our relationship with you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please sit down. Thank you so much for cooperating. You know. Thank you. Now I feel the presence. I love the Holy Spirit so much. So very much. So the topic is work-life balance. And what we're basically trying to do is understand what we should do regarding life and regarding our work in terms of how we balance it. There is so much happening in the world right now. And that is why this topic is really critical. You know, it's really key. Tell somebody this topic is critical. It's really critical. You know, when you go out there, you see there are so many people that are frustrated, so many people that are depressed, so many people that have no idea of what they are doing in their marriage, so many people have no idea of what they are doing as workers. Some people have even lost it. They are on antidepressants because they cannot balance their lives. There's so much pressure out there. People are into drugs because they cannot manage the pressure of life. They're losing it. A sister of mine called me sometime and she was like, you know I'm on antidepressants. And I was like, what? Antidepressants. I said, why are you taking antidepressants? You are in Nigeria. And I mean, you should be used to stress. And she was like, well, that's how you people behave in Nigeria. You fake and fake and fake. You'll be suffering. It's off you to go and take something. And I'm like, come on, don't you, when you have Jesus, you have everything. What do you need antidepressants for? You don't need it to manage tension. But then it just boils down to the fact that really, really, a lot of people are going through mental health issues and they are not able to cope as single people because of the pressure, as wives because of pressure of managing husbands and managing children, the economy has even made it worse. The salary we earn cannot go anywhere. Right? Can your own go anywhere? It can't. No matter how much we stretch it. Eh? <laughs> it's like it's not salary anymore. When you come out, they, you go and take bus, they've changed the price. Anything you want to do, meet it's even yam. The other day, somebody went to buy yam. They will cut it now. Before you would buy one tuba now, they can even cut it. You take one part. How can we not be stressed? Right? How can we not be? There are so many factors creating stress in our lives. And so when we sit down to discuss how to manage our lives, our businesses, especially for some, some of us that are just starting, some people, they are stressed because they haven't married. They are looking for husbands. And their mothers will not allow them rest. Their aunties will not allow them rest. Where is the man? Huh? Disturbing your life. Another stress factor. How do I manage these aunties? How do I manage my parents? How do I manage everybody around me? How do I manage my business that is trying, I mean, I'm trying to get to come up to that level. I want it to be successful. How do I manage all these things? How do I juggle? I tell you, I was in that situation some time back. I was everywhere. I was doing everything and nothing seemed to be moving. And I was like, is this how I'm just going to be moving endlessly? Uh, you know, they call it um, parabolating. You are just parabolating. And you're not seeing, you know, yourself actually taking a breather. And so it's a good time to just relax and talk about this. But I want us to look at some foundational scriptures just to set the stage this morning. And it's important that we look at it. You can write it down. Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet, not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, by the Son of God who loved me and by... And... Um, 
who I live for. I don't know how your Bible describes it. Romans 14, 8. Romans 14, 8. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. We are the Lord's. So this life, life, life we're talking about, it's not my life. It's not your life. Whose life does it belong to? It's God's life. So why are we killing ourselves about it? But Ecclesiastic says, Ecclesiastic 9, 7 says, Go eat your food with gladness and drink your wine with a joyful heart. For God has already approved what you do. In other words, we should also be merry. It's not just walk, 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 walk. We should also drink some wine. I don't know whether it's non-alcoholic or alcoholic. Don't ask me. <laughs> we should also drink some wine and be merry. Be happy in the spirit, right? You want me to answer that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 30, 19. This day I call, and this is the one I like, I call the heavens and the earth witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children, not just you, and your children may live. In other words, there is a path that you go into that gives life, and there is a path that you go into that gives destruction. And not only will it give you destruction, but it will give your wife destruction, your own children destruction, and everybody around you destruction. Like the drugs that we take to balance. Right? A little about work. Psalm 97. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. In other words, we must work. We must work. I have a friend that was going to marry some time back and she brought this man and I was like, you're marrying this man. This man does not look like somebody that is ever going to work. She said, God called, God called him to be, to called him to be totally devoted, to be just be worshipping. I said that you are going to marry and you're going to have children and you will not work. For 30 years, my friend suffered. Suffered. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He who does not work will not. We must work. We must work. Deuteronomy 5, 13, 14. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath day to the Lord your God. And you shall do nothing. So that means God who is a worker... Because if you look at the sun that comes out at a particular time every day, you look at the moon, you look at the stars, you look at the vegetation, our God works excellently. If God stops working, now we'll all die. We'll all stop breathing. Right? So God believes that we must work. However, God says on the Sabbath day, you must rest. If you read the Bible, from Genesis to, I mean, even from Deuteronomy, all the way you would see that there were times where God dealt with the Israelites for not obeying the Sabbath. He was very upset. He felt that only idol worshippers or people that were foreign, you understand, may not keep the Sabbath. But the Israelites were meant to keep the Sabbath. And if you actually review the way the Israelites keep the Sabbath, especially the Samarian Israelis, you would see that even from Friday they start practicing on how to practice the Sabbath. They start practicing on how to do the Sabbath. So in other words, from Friday, they, because they don't cook on the Sabbath day. They don't drive on the Sabbath day. They don't lift up things on the Sabbath day. And it will resonate with you, with you when you remember what the um, you know, Pharisees and the Sadducees did to Jesus when he tried to um, you know, heal somebody on the Sabbath. They were like, why are you healing on the Sabbath? Because the Israelis will not do anything. If you go abroad, I mean, if you're blessed to go abroad, you would see that where the Jews are. On the Sabbath day, they wear a special black outfit or, you know, some kind of garb. And then they just go all around the street visiting themselves. That's why they like to stay in communities alone. Right? Because rest is so critical. 
so critical. So how have I been able to manage all these work life in all these 30 years of my work life, of my marrying, of my bringing up four lovely children, of um, also studying through the period and you know, doing so much by his grace. How was I able to do it? I'm just going to share about seven things that were critical to me. Seven things that were critical to me that I believe must be critical to you in managing work-life balance. Doctor is going to give you a more academic, academic um, study. You know he's a doctor, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I'm going to give you the spiritual things that guided me. Because right from the onset, I was a Christian. I entered marriage a Christian. I gave birth to my children. Not just Christian. No, I had a relationship with Abba Father. So the first secret or the first thing that was critical to me was a focus on God. In balancing my life, God was my focus. Denzel Washington said something. He said, put God first. God is the critical factor that through which you draw your, you know, a value system from. If you do not have the right value system that you draw from, you will have problem. Some people have a value system that is drawn from drugs. Some people have a value system that is drawn from Ogboni. Some people have a value system that is drawn from something, right? But my value system was drawn derived from the word of God, from God himself, because God is the fulcrum. He's a fulcrum on which I sit. So when I go all out there, when I'm tired, God, the Holy Spirit, Master Jesus, is like a duct that I come back to to recharge. God is the guiding principles of everything that I am. God is my identity. And with a God factor, I have efficiency. And I'll tell you why. Because everywhere that I go to, everywhere that I go to, my industry is very small and my own niche is very small. Everybody knows who Frances is. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? They know my values. They know what I re represent. So if, for instance, I'll just give you an example. There was a day I was going to move from one job to the other and I had to go for an interview. And all they needed to do was to call, does she have integrity? And my, my boss I was leaving said, 100%. Now, when you have a value system that is driven from God, you are efficient in all that you do because you, don't, you cut the chase. When they see you, they know who you are. The negotiations, the discussions, the engagements, the interfaces are cut short because there is no parabolating. Nobody is talking stories. I meet you. I go straight to the point to talk about what I need from you. I meet you. I go straight to the point to have those discussions that are based on scriptural, spiritual values. And so I am efficient, or I was very efficient with my time because of the God factor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second thing that was also critical to me when growing up was the need to be present and alert everywhere I was. You know you have some people, anywhere they are, they are not present. They are always restless. I had a boss. In the office, she comes in the morning. From 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock, she's doing business, personal business. You know, she's not doing office business. Then at the time that we're supposed to be going home, that's when she's doing office business. And then she keeps me. And I'm not lying, no, I'm not exaggerating. She will keep me in the office. Thank God I wasn't married then. Till 11 o'clock. One day, the security man called me and said, do you have any problem at home? Why are you going home 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock? I said, I don't have problem. I don't have problem. He's my boss. Because that is evil. How can you not balance your life? How can you do your personal work when you should be? In fact, you are stealing. The Bible, the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, give to Caesar what is Caesar. As long as the company is paying you, as long as you are paying yourself on the job or the company is paying you, for the period that you are supposed to work, be present. Be present.
present, be alert, do the work that you are supposed to do. When you leave the office and you go home, you have to be present at home. You have to be present with your children. You have to be present with your husband. Now, there are sometimes there will be overlaps, but you don't make it the order of day. You don't make it the, the norm. Do we understand? You must be present. Go to the office 7 o'clock to 5 o'clock. Do office work. Don't do things that you ought not to because the company is paying you. Stop stealing the company's time. And stop frustrating young people or frustrating, you know, other people. Five o'clock, pack your load, go home and go and give. Be present in your family. Then you will be efficient with your time. You will be efficient with what you do. The third thing that was also critical for me was relationship. Relationship. I'm sure we all know that God blesses us through relationships. God blesses us through men. God blesses us through women. Relationships are the, are the, um, the, 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 the system, inbuilt system created by God to ensure that we are comforted, to ensure that we increase, to ensure that we progress in life. Your relationships are so critical. And so, as children of God or as, 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 as men and women, how do we ensure that we manage our relationships? We must compartmentalize. We must compartmentalize our relationships. So, for instance, if you are married, like when I was married, I know that my husband is very, very critical. Number one, after God Almighty, right? I know that after my husband, my children, whom I invest in, they come second. I cannot compromise concerning my relationship with my children. The third, I need to ensure that my parents, I manage the relationship with them. It is, it is important. And so, in my planning, CEO, I plan, I diarize everything that I need to diarize concerning my life. So, for instance, my parents, I choose to call them every Sunday. Right? Diarize it. So you are planning on how to just go. So, so on Sunday is not a day I will not be thinking of work when I'm thinking of my family. My children, I must know everything that has to do with their life. So what are the, um, what are the things I need to go and do in their school? What do I need to do concerning their exams? What things do I need to buy concerning anything they need to do in a month, two months time? And if I cannot manage it myself, I make sure that I organize a nanny that can cope with it. Do you understand? A lot of children these days are hanging low and dry. If you remember, we had a situation with, in Christland, a school, I mean, where a child, you saw, I don't know how many of you saw that video. That is because that child has been ignored. That child's needs have been ignored. Relationship needs from the parents. You must create time for the children. You must spend time with them. In my family, we had a slogan. Any family game, we must all do. Or we must all be part of. And so when my husband was into cricket, well, I couldn't play cricket, but I would go with him to the cricket pitch. But thankfully, he moved to golf. And so all of us, me, my first child, my second child, my third child, my fourth child, we will all go and play golf together. Do we understand? And don't say it is expensive. That's what I keep hearing. There are second-hand golf kits. There are many, many ways you can, you can flow. You don't have to buy high-end things if you need to do golf and do things with your, with your family. Do you understand? And we're going to go there, right? So we made up our minds that because we do not have time, especially in Lagos, and I, we even keep two homes. My, my, we keep a home in Wari. We keep a home here. Everything we do, we do together. So if we are going to the golf course, we go together. Right? And then after playing golf, what happens is usually they start to drink, right? So we sit down with ourselves and we drink Fanta or Coke or whatever, right? So if your spouse or your, 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 your um, you know, boyfriend or whatever, they like a particular thing, make up your mind that you will spend quality time with your wife, with your children, because they need you. And so in the golf course, I give my children life principles. Are you understand? As we are playing, I'm telling them things, I'm asking them questions. Um, so it's quality 
time. Efficiency. If, if your husband likes football and you are a woman, please go and learn, go and sit down with football. Eh? Sit down with him, right? Especially if he can tolerate it. But men, I hope you will learn how to tolerate your wives going with you wherever you are watching those things. <laughs> you don't want the woman there. Uh, if it is me, I will follow you. <laughs> because you need to preserve time, right? So that was one of the ways that we were able to manage. And then other relationships. I had my primary school friends. My primary school friends, we are so close. We, 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 we have occasional eating together, drinking together. My secondary school friends. Guess what? Your net worth is your net work. If you are not able to manage relationships and put them to good use, then what's the purpose of forming those relationships? What, what's the purpose of having those relationships? You must have time to nurture, to midwife your relationships so that they would work for you in a way that would be balanced. Are, we, are you with me? Are you with me? Am I making sense so far? Then the fourth thing that um, I would also like to um, share with you is the fact that do not focus on quantity. You must focus on quality. I tell my children, I might not give you all the time in the world, but any time I am with you, I will give you quality. Do you understand? I will give you what? Quality. So any time you are with people, it's not about the quantity. I took some guys out. Um, I took some guys out, um, you know, last week. Because one of the things, one of my uh, ministries is to nurture youths. And so I work with youths a lot. So I took some of them out. They came from Abuja and one came from somewhere. I took them out um, to eat on Saturday. I gave myself um, 15 minutes to eat with them. And we sat down there. And in 15 minutes, I looked at my time. I said, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. Did you gain from what we discussed? Yes. Did you learn from what I said? Yes. What are the learnings? And they told me. And I was done, 15 minutes, and then I went to do other things. So you must learn to give quality time, not quantity. If you are with people for one hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and your work life is suffering or your business life is suffering and you are just whiling away the time, then you, you are, you're, you're, you're wasting your time. It's, it's, um, it's, what, are you, what are you gaining from that relationship? What are you gaining from those things? You know, so you want to make sure that at any point in time, you are managing quality time with people. So that way what happens is that you spend, the th you spend time on things that are critical, that has to do with your business, that has to do with your work, the place where you make your money. It's so, so important. It's so, so important. Then the other thing I would also like to talk about is your budgeting. I know a lot of times, um, you know, we feel like we need to work hard and work hard and have one job, two jobs, three jobs, so that, you know, we will have, make money. You don't have to buy everything that your friends buy. You don't have to be amongst the Joneses. You don't have to see if I was the kind of person that wanted to wear all the kind of things that my friends wear and do all the things that my friends do. Honestly, I will not leave my office because I will want all the promotions in the world and I will want to make all the money in the world. There's a time for everything. You don't have to be so ambitious that you will kill yourself trying to get to the top. You will still get to the top. Do we understand? You will still get to the top. Time it, prime it, you know. Go bit by bit by bit by bit. It's not everybody doesn't have to arrive at the top at the same time. Don't kill yourself. You must ensure that you manage your life in such a way that you manage whatever you are earning. Right? Do not say, okay, this money is not enough now. I have to do this because I have to drive them a jeep. I have to drive this. I have to drive that. I, you know, it's, you have to relax. Eh? Your rapper will call it what? Farabale. Or what, how do you say it? Take life easy. Right? The top, the sky is very wide. We will all get there. Even me, I'm still trying to get to the sky. I'm still trying to find my way up there. Right? I've not reached my peak yet. Right? So take life easy. 
It's not that because you want to make it to the top, you want to frustrate other people that are around you to show that you are the best in your work life, right? Then you want to break the bank and make all the money now. Then you want to kill yourself on the job. Please take your life easy. You will get there eventually. You know, in my, in my, in my, the first place I worked, I was a contract staff for like seven years. See, it is terrible to be a contract staff. You know what I'm talking about? It is terrible. You will work, work. All my mates, they were being promoted. They were enjoying good things of life. Me, I was just like contract staff. I was, you know, supping to them. And I was managing my life, working hard, small by small. Then the seventh year, God opened the heavens, just opened. And they made me a staff. Praise the Lord. Do you know that when they made me a staff, right? Within four years, and I'm not lying, within four years, I passed all the people that passed me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? See, eh, the promotions, eh, they were just like, um, this year, that year, you know, it, it just came. And I just became their boss, their boss, and I was looking at them. How did it happen? All the work that I had been working, small by small, managing myself, I wasn't fighting anybody, I wasn't frustrated, I wasn't anything. God just did it. In one day, God can promote you. In one day, God can turn that business around. It is not by killing yourself. Don't kill yourself. Do you understand? Don't, um, you know, want to break the bank. Right? So, budget, manage your life. The whatever you are earning, manage it. The, for every 10,000 naira and crap, there is a 1,000 naira one. If I buy the 1,000 naira one and I sew it, you will not know. Right? Uh, you will not know. And I, and, if, and I don't have to tell you how much I bought it. Do I have to tell you? Do you understand? So take your life easy. Eh? It is not a rat race that you must die in. 20-something-year-old bankers are dying. 30-something-year-old people are dying. For what now? Why, what are you, why, are you, why are you running yourself to the grave? Right? And forget all these pictures you see on Instagram. They are lies. They are lies. Are you hearing? Many of them are lies. Do you understand? And you just see somebody who go and pose in front of one car, and you know, take another car, then you know, they do all the makeup, they do all the this, they come out. Come on. Don't believe in all those things. Do you understand? Right? Be yourself. Enjoy your life. Take it easy. The day it is Gary, you want to soak, soak it. Do you understand? You don't have to go to Erikaza or one big... Uh, do you understand? You don't have to look at anybody. You will get there. I don't care about Gucci. I don't care about, um, you know, Louis Vuitton. I don't care about all those things. Do you understand? You shouldn't care about those things. Those, those things do not define you. Your identity in Christ should be what will define you. Right? And then we must make hard choices. When you are in the office or any kind of employment, there are sometimes you must not compromise regarding your life, your husband, your, your, your wife. You must not compromise. In 2019, I moved from one company to the other and... Um, just almost immediately, my daughter had to go um, abroad for a sports competition. And um, I just went to the HR. I said, uh, well, I have to travel with my daughter for this competition. And they were like, um, ah, but you just resumed. You just resumed. You, you can't go. I said, no, I can't go. I will go. I said, because my daughter is more important to me. And they were like, well, you have to go to the MD. I said, yeah, sure, I'll go to the MD. I now went to the MD. I said, my daughter is traveling and I have to travel with her because she was just 12 and she was going to Thailand. And you know, Thailand is one of those places where drugs, they are, uh, so even though they have teachers that will take care of them, I need to follow my daughter into that kind of place. You understand? You can't compromise with your family, your, your daughters, your sons, your, you know, everything about them matters. And then my MD was like, but you've only just started working. I said, well, I have a family. And they were like, so, but, but if you go, you risk. I said, you know what? The only risk that I see right now, sir, is that my daughter is traveling 
and I need to follow my daughter. Because if I don't follow my daughter, my daughter is at risk. This company will wait. If I die, you will only dust the file and life will continue. You will employ somebody else, right? And they in, if eventually said, okay, fine. It looks like this thing is very important to you. I said, please know now that my family is very important to me. And I packed my life, uh, my, my child, and I, we went. Do you understand? Thank you. Don't worry, I'll keep to time. <laughs> and I went with my, with my child. Your, your husband, your wife, your... You see, it, they're so important. Do you know what happened on Sunday? My husband went to play golf in Ibadan, right? And then he was supposed to go back to um, worry. And then he called, and he was like he was on his way to worry. And yours truly was missing my husband so much. I just changed my voice. I said, ah, you are going to worry? I thought you were coming to Lagos. Ah, why now? And he was like, um, no, but you didn't say so. We didn't conclude. I said, no, we concluded though. You said you were coming to Lagos. Please, oh, you have to come to Lagos. Do you understand? I said, because the way I'm feeling, I just started to fan. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yours truly, my husband changed car. He was traveling with a friend. He changed to another car. You see, your family is important. Your wife is important. Your husband is important. Your children, they are important. Work is important. But you must be able to balance to ensure that these compartments are taken care of. Perhaps if my husband hadn't come, I would not have died though. But guess what? That he honored me. It means that me too, I must continue to honor him. Do you understand? Because by the time he landed in the house, I was shocked. I thought he was not really going to come. That is how we honor ourselves. That is what God expects us to do. Praise the Lord. And then the final thing that I want to talk about is rest. Sabbath day. Rest is so important. See, let me tell you something. If anything happens to you right now, right? Let me, the sun will come out. Right? If you are a woman and you are married, your husband will marry again. If you are a man and, um, you know, something happens to you, your, your wife will smile again. It's not the end of the world. Do you understand? The only thing that God has given us is this life. And God expects us to be efficient, to be effective, and to honor the life he has given us through the way we take care of this life, right? From the days of your youth, you have to learn how to rest. You must shut down. Sunday is a shut down day. Please, don't hassle too much on Sunday. I know we want to make money. Rest your brain, rest your mind, rest your spirit, rest your soul, rest everything and enjoy the presence of God on Sunday, right? eventually it will pay you if you you must you are your own best doctor do you understand you must know your body you must feel your body you must know where your body is tired and where your body is losing it right even if you are in the office and your body doesn't feel right go to your boss's office and say do you know what my body does not feel right. I must go and rest. Do you know people now slump in the office and die? Do you know people now die on the road on the, as they are driving? What is this rat race about? Well, our bodies need rest. And that is because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 24, 7, 12 o'clock, 1 midnight, we are working because we want to make ends meet. Right? I know some men and women that they died long ago. They, are, they left their children orphans. Their children are doing very well right now. Right? The only thing you can do for your children is to rest when you need to rest. Work when you need to work. Play when you need to play. Party when you need to party. And be moderate in the way that you live your life. Right? And the only way you can be moderate about how you live your life is to go back to how Jesus lived his life. Jesus lived so well, luxuriously. He loved everybody. He took care of everybody. He did all that he needed to do. He enjoyed himself with the disciples. 
He washed their feet. He served them. He took care of the Sadducees and Pharisees by dealing with them when he needed to do. Right? But guess what? At the end of the day, he would tell his disciples, come, let's go and rest. Right? At the end of the day, he himself will go and commune back with the Father to recharge because he knows that there must be a balance. If Jesus Christ that died for the whole world, it was not you that was on the cross, so if he could go and rest sometimes with Jesus Christ and with God, if he could go and rest with the Holy Spirit, who are we not to rest, not to balance our lives, not to enjoy our life, enjoy our work, enjoy our play, and enjoy everything? Praise the Lord. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. A message unto you I bring. It is a message full of love. Hallelujah. It is written and I know it's true. So look and live, my brothers, live. Look to Jesus now and live. It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. You can do better. You can do better. You can do better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There was so much to soak in. Wow. She's so loaded. She is so, so loaded. And you know the beautiful thing about her? You can see the peace all around her. Even with so much that she does, she still has this peace all around her. And you know what? It is only Jesus that can give you that kind of peace. It is not your hustle or your bustle. It's only Jesus. She said something. She started with something. She said, focus on God. That's the first thing that we need to do. And you know, many a times I tell people, we always make God our spare tire. Instead of us making him the steering wheel of our lives will make God the spare tire. She also said something. Be present. Stop stealing your company's time. You know, the first time I heard that message was from Daddy Adeboye. He said something. He said, you use your company Wi-Fi to do your personal business. He said, you use the company envelope to do your personal business. He said, you use the company photocopying machine to do your personal business. That word stuck to me, and I repented while I was working. Sincerely speaking, I thought I was serving God. You know, we'll do minutes in, the, in my ministry and I'll use the company's photocopying machine and I'll do and do and do. But you know, when I got that message, I had to pause. I'm like, that's true. Be present. Stop stealing your company's time. Relationship. How do you manage your relationships? We need to compactualize our relationship. She said something that I'm going to take home today. Your husband, after God, is your number one. For those of us that are married. And if you're not married, your parents, your children, and your parents giving back to them. They are first ministries. You need to spend quality time Spend, you know, she said something about spending 11 minutes. That 11 minutes is like 11 hours. Because there was so much that was achieved. 
And I'll say your motive. What's your motive behind anything you do? You need to manage your time with people. Budgets. Budgets. You know, there's something she said. If you are earning 100,000 now, you know you will leave. And you earn 300,000 or 500,000 and 1 million. You know you will leave. So what's the difference between that 100,000 and that 1 million you are earning? Nine. <laughs> Budgets. Yeah. Do not compromise. And above all, rests. 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 And that's the work-life balance that we're talking about. Once again, I'd like you to put your hand together for our darling Mrs. Frances Omaroi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I have a notebook full of all you said, and I promise I'm going to put them into practice. So help me God. And I'm sure you two will do that. Ladies and gentlemen, the train is moving. We have heard from a woman's point of view. And I'm sure you'd like to hear what the doctor has got to say to us. Remember, Mrs. Francis said she's, she did her own from experience. We are going to get the academic part of it, doc. Is that not so? Thank you. So we're going to balance both academic and experience together. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to invite Mrs. Kemi Ojo to please come and give the citation of our own doctor, Oleye. Mrs. Kemi. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Just like this is known already. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I can believe we've all been blessed. I've been blessed. I have been blessed. Thank you so much, ma. That was packed. Coming for a seminar, I thought it was going to be another academic exercise. It was totally different. So without further ado, and standing on the existing protocol, I have a very small assignment and the honor to introduce our second speaker for today. I've been struggling, sir. As a Yoruba woman and well-trained in knowing that there's a lot in a name, I was like, gosh, how am I going to pronounce it? The thing said, Holy Spirit said, just ask him. <laughs> so if you can help me, what's the actual say? Omogbae Olegbe. Olegbe. Thank you very much. Okay. Omogbae Olegbe. So I'll move quickly into this profile. Is Dr. Omogbae Olegbe has received his first, first degree in mechanical engineering, graduating in 1991 from the prestigious University of Lagos, Greater Stakokite. Greater Stakokite. Well done. <laughs> he holds a master's in business administration from the Birmingham Business School, University of Birmingham, England, where he graduated with a distinction. He concluded another master's program. We're really up for an academician, don't worry. <laughs> he graduated he concluded another master's program in manufacturing consultancy at the University of England, uh, sorry, at the School of Applied Sciences, Cranfield University, England, in September 2013, and then proceeded to his PhD in the same university. Dr. Olege completed his PhD in January 2019 with a focus on the use of hybrid simulation modeling as a decision-making tool for lean management. He is the managing director of Wright Pack Company Limited, which has interest in packaging, manufacturing, business consultancy, and more recently, software development. Dr. Omogbae is also a guest lecturer at the Department of Systems Engineering, University of Lagos. He teaches postgraduate students in topics relating to decision analysis, supply chain management, technical project management, and advanced business science. Dr. Lagrae's current skill set is diverse in lean management, simulation modeling, optimization modeling, 
Phantom programming language, JavaScript, Kubernetes, Docker's edge computing, cloud computing, big data analytics, data mining, and machine learning. Please, 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 please keep it going. <laughs> These are core skill set needed for tracking many contemporary real world problems. Dr. Omogbai Olege has published well cited papers on lean manufacturing, simulation modeling, data mining, and edge computing. He's married and happy with his beloved wife. I don't have the details with two sons. With a warm welcome, may I bring on stage our guest speaker, Dr. Omogai Olege. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Doctor, please, sir. Um, please, um, if you have questions, I'd like you to put your questions together for the first speaker. Please put them together and I'll get them. Just signal to me, I'll get them. Please keep clapping for doctor. I was glad I wasn't the one that had to read that citation. I'm sure by now I would have beaten my tongue. Praise the Lord. Thank, thank you so much for that. Uh, I didn't know that they were going to give that uh, short uh, profile here. Because that's a profile I normally I, I put in uh, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram. But I'm on LinkedIn and ResearchGate. Because maybe because I'm more academic. But what are we doing academic here? So I'm seeing some people writing. Don't write. Don't take me back to Unilag lecturing days where <laughs> we're lecturing and you're having to, to write. But I have uh, some sl a, a set of slides, so um, I'll share it with everyone. Okay, so please don't, 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 uh, don't write. Listen, and then we'll discuss. You know, I believe we'll get more in the question and answer, you know, the feedback and all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the thanks and praise, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering, and we pray, O oh Lord, that your name and your name alone will be praised and glorified. Be thou glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. So I, I, I warmly welcome everyone, and I thank the, uh, the organizers, the, uh, the chair, the committee, and all those who put this together. It's amazing. When I came in, I was so amazed and surprised to see uh, the setup and the whole thing. All the organizers. I can imagine what everyone would have gone through, all, all those, those in the committee that are arranging this. Uh, kudos to you guys, and well done. Well done. And uh, so today we're talking about work-life balance, and my sister has uh, touched on the, um, a lot of the things I will also, I also be talking about. Uh, so we'll be looking at how, how what, what is it, what does a balanced work life, how does it look like, you know, and what, what, what is an imbalance when you have a work life imbalance, what does it look like? Because we should know all those things, you know, uh, but I pray that God will speak through me today and then we'll be able to live here with something, even if it's just one thing you pick up, let it be that one thing that you will take out of what we have all said and then also... We'll, uh, we'll, we'll take it there. I was here on, um, I think, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday communion, and uh, I, w I was walking by, and, and uh, I heard uh, Mama Yad call uh, uh, our vicar handsome. I said, ah. <laughs> and the way he responded, I said, ah. But that is evidence of a balanced life where you, 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 your, 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 your spouse, you and your spouse are like brother and sister. That is evidence. And we're going to look at that evidence of balance. By fact, when, when we got to my wife was telling me, look, she's going to start calling me a uh, husband, uh, handsome. I said, no, that one is reserved for uh, the big. <laughs> Let us look for another name that we'll be calling ourselves in the house. But those are evidences of balanced life where you and your spouse are like brother and sister, your clothes and all that. And like I said, we'll, We'll look at that. So, I have a set of slides which I'll, I'll like I said, I'll share. I'll share after the, um, after this. Uh, I hope you can see it there. So, what is work-life balance? Uh, first, well, before, I, before I go on, uh, we're talking about work. So, am I right to assume that we're all working? We're not all working. Okay, so some of us are working in paid employment. Some of us are self-employed, we are working. And some of us are not employed. 
But this topic that we're discussing today is for everyone. Because even if you don't use it now, at some point in time, you will need it. So take out as much as you can, and then uh, hopefully you'll be able to uh, use it when the need arises. So work-life balance, what is this? It is a situation where your work and your life are equally matched, more or less equally. So the time that you spend working and the time that you spend for other non-work-related activities are more or less like balanced, you know. Uh, you have work on one side and you have rest, which uh, my sister had talked about, rest. We need to rest. But there's something in between, and that is the life. That is the life that we are living, you know. While we're not working and while we're not resting, and I will assume that resting is like we're sleeping. Let's, let's just assume that we're sleeping. So what are you doing in between that period? That is what we're going to be looking at. And you've seen that things are competing for our time. There's so much competing for our time. And how do we juggle? How do we juggle all those things? So work-life balance is something we desire. We actually desire it. You know, but it is, we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't implement it. We desire to have a balanced work life. Okay? And like our sister had said, Jesus Christ lived the perfect, balanced life. Jesus attended the wedding. He rested. He took time out with his family, his disciples. He was close to them, you know, which uh, the earlier speaker had spoken about. He prayed. He preached. That preaching is like evangelizing. Okay? And he did the work of God. And like I said, Jesus also spent time with the disciples. On the other side, what is work-life imbalance? Which is what we're talking about as well. Because when you talk about work-life balance, you also need to look at imbalance. What is imbalance? Imbalance is where work is taking majority of your time. Work is taking majority of your time. And uh, when I came in, there was somebody I was thinking about because uh, my wife had worked with her in the, same, in the same organization, and I was happy when I saw her here. And I said, look, let me go and even ask her uh, about uh, how, uh, this, because I know in the bank, when you're working in the bank, you're, it's, it's, um, it's really the same. Because my wife worked in the bank, and like she said, she used to, there was a time she used to come, in, she used to come back around 11 p.m., 12 p.m., you know, and you begin to look at it, what's, what is the balance in that? She's exhausted. You know, there's no time for the, for the children, you know, but... So I asked her that, that, what's the situation now in the same uh, organization? And I said, well, that they've looked at it and seen that a lot of their staff were leaving because of this imbalance. They were leaving. So what they've done now is they've said, look, by 5 p.m., you must leave the office. I said, okay, what if you are still doing what? I said, look, at 5 p.m., they shut down the server, so you can't even walk. So unless you want to stay there, you know. Oh, maybe. <laughs> so so my, my sister here says, the cost of this has helped us to live, <laughs> to, <laughs> to balance, but we thank God, <laughs> you know. So we, we become stressed and depressed. Our relationships are affected. Our relationships, your, your relationship with your husband, with your children, with your friends, you know, they are affected when... You're spending so much time at work and less time doing other things, you know. We do not desire imbalance. Nobody wants to have a, a, an imbalanced work life. It's not something we desire, but it's something that creeps on us. You know, if we're not careful, we just want to look, we're spending more time doing one thing than the other, okay? And so sometimes we do not know Sometimes we don't know that there's an imbalance in our life. Is when you begin to see the evidences of it, you begin to now know that, yes, there's an imbalance there. So what are the causes of work imbalance? Where you have a very, very busy work schedule, you know, like I said, working till 5, 7 p.m., you know. Uh, working in Lagos is stressful. Living in Lagos is stressful. Lagos will humble you. Anybody, Lagos will humble you. You know, uh, when you enter traffic, 
There's some traffic you will enter. You know you will. <laughs> Father, they say that this traffic is not for kids. Those kind of traffic. So, you spend time in traffic, you know, b- very busy schedule. Uh, sometimes we work as if our, our life depends on work. You know, as if our life depends on work. But that scripture tells us, like, we cannot get fulfillment through work. Take note of that. You cannot get fulfillment through work. Okay? And then some of us, because we have a limited life outside of work activities. Some of us, outside work, there's no other life. So I'd rather work. And those are the causes of work-life imbalance. Okay? We said that there's work and there's rest. So in between, there are things that we do. Non-work life, uh, sorry, non-work related activities. And I'm just just a list of some of them. So church related ones, the services, the fellowship that we, we engage in, okay? The spiritual things that we take in, you know, time for prayer, time for Bible study, you know, time for praise and worship. And I'll give you, uh, there's a slide that, I'm, that is there that will see how we can apportion time for all these things in our busy, very busy, very busy day, okay? Spiritual output, evangelizing, outreach, because the church organizes outreaches from time to time. How often do we attend those things, okay? Uh, I put holiday, I put, I put a, I put a, I canceled holiday there. It was there initially, but I canceled it. We said, holiday is not something I would take regularly, you know, uh, maybe once a year, once in two years, you know, but holiday, you don't have to go abroad for, to holiday, you know, it's just taking time out is even a holiday. Social events, you know, like I said, Jesus attended the wedding. So we are, we need to socialize. We have to socialize, you know, it's important. Gym exercising, that is important. Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to think what I've done today. You know, uh, my, my friend, the uh, engineer Gigi, uh, I, I was telling her, we saw, I saw him at the, um, there's this prayer chain that uh, uh, one of the churches also I partly attend, uh, Church of Nativity, where we're doing a prayer chain of 24 hours. And then he was there. I was, I, I, I was leading a prayer session. I also had to be there, but I also had to start in the night. You know, so... I'm looking at all the things I have even done today, you know, be attended the, that prayer session. I've gone to the gym, you know, I've done some exercises. I've done my prayer. I've done some Bible study. Okay. So, examples. Then also spending time with family and friends. Very, very important. We need to spend time with family and friends. You can't, you can't run away from that. And then self-improvement. We need to improve ourselves. Do not stand on, do not, do not stay in a position. Have, have a mindset that you, are, you should constantly improve. So you need to spend and dedicate time for that. And when I'm saying improvement, I'm talking about things like online courses that are cheap. They're not expensive, some are even free. Or things like this where we come together and we discuss, you know, Things where you can learn, where you can improve, improve, improve yourself. Okay, so those are the things that are actually competing for our time outside of work and outside of rest. Okay, this is very small. So, what do we gain from engaging each of these non-work related uh, activities? Okay, we have spiritual growth. There's mental well-being. There's uh, physical. There's physical well-being as well. There's doing God's word, doing God's work. We have to do God's work. We cannot relegate that to, to anything. We have to do that. Okay. Uh, there's the increasing the family bonding as well. You know. And then there's increasing your knowledge. So I've tried to map this out with those, those um, uh, non-work related activities that I said are competing for our time. Okay. So these are the things that we gain from engaging each of these non-work related activities. How can we create time 
for those things that are competing for our time. Okay? And at the same time, fulfill God's purpose for our lives. If you, if you read that uh, uh, sentence, there's one word that keeps coming out, and that is time. That is time. Okay? How can we create time for those things competing for our own time and at the same time fulfill God's purpose for our lives? How do we balance how do we balance those things and make sure that in all of this they were doing God's we are doing God's work? First and foremost, we pray to God to help us prioritize these things. You can't be at everywhere at, all at the same time. It's not possible. You can't do, I mean, there's a limitation, there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a limited number of things you can do at the same time. So you prioritize. Which ones should I do first? Which ones should I do next? You prioritize what you're engaging. Make a conscious effort to accomplish what you have set out to do. If you say you are going to do something, go ahead and do it. So don't just say you will do something and leave it, but make a conscious effort to accomplish what you say you will do in terms of priority and in terms of doing those things, engaging in those, those non-work life, uh, non-work-related activities. Don't copy others. We will tell you our own position, how we live our own lives and all that. We'll give you examples. But don't copy us, okay? Get the best from as many as you can and see how you can modify it to your own life because everybody's life is different, okay? Like I said, some of us are working. Some of us are working till 10 p.m., 11 p.m. Some of us are working by 4 p.m. We are on our way home. Some of us, when we, when, we, when, we, when we leave work, another work starts because we're entering traffic to get home. That is another work on its own. Before you even get home, it's, we're talking about time spent. Okay, so we all have different uh, things that, were, that is taking up our time. So you cannot take somebody else's, uh, 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 what works best for somebody else, and just slap, on, slap it on yourself. You need to modify it, okay? But be willing to modify what works well for others. They apportion activities, and like uh, my sister here said, they arise. Okay, apportion your activities for the day, for the, for, the, for the week, for the year. Apportion your activities. Have it to do, I mean, when, when you're going to do things. Okay. I try to, I try to do my, uh, um, my uh, Bible studies in the mornings. As soon as I wake up, I try to do that in the morning because I know that when I get into the uh, tick of day, you know, before you know it, you've forgotten what, look, you've not even read your Bible. So set time, set time, times that you will do you know, do things. Very important is that you need to make, you should be ready to make alterations because at any point in time, you, you may need to change. Things are dynamic. Okay? And I'll give an example. Uh, there was, I used to spend a lot of time doing a Bible study in the morning, but I found out, look, I was rushing it because I needed to go out on time. Okay? So what did I do? I, um, I said, okay, look, I would, uh, I would, do some of it the night before and then do some of it in the morning. So I was like splitting it into two so that I'm not having to do so much and rushing it. I'm not even getting that spiritual uh, intake. So adapt, modify and see, look, what works best for you, okay? What works best for you? Time management is very important. Time management, even when you're working, is all about time management. How can you get this thing done as quickly as possible and move on to something else? Okay? But the things of God should not be rushed. That is very, very important. But time management for the other things. And like I said, never neglect spiritual activities. My sister had talked about God. That's why that circle is very big. You, can't, you, can't, you, you, have, to, you have to dedicate time for God. Dedicate time to doing the things that God has told you to do. Spending time with God. It's extremely important. And 
I apportioned some time there. I said, these are things that I, I will do. Okay. So things like during the weekdays, when you are at work, you can take short, short period, short, short periods to read the Bible, to, uh, to, to uh, listen to praise worship songs, short, short periods. It doesn't, you don't have to take a whole hour. If it's five, ten minutes, but let it be frequent. That's why I said short periods all day weekdays because I know that most of us or some of us are working. You know, after work on the way home, you can also listen to praise worship songs. Pray in your car, pray in the bus, pray in your public, whatever it is. But let that spiritual activity always be there. Okay? Uh, after work, when you get home before you sleep, you can also spend time there. Uh, short periods all day as well. So even during the weekday, during the, at the weekends as well, you can also take, spend, uh, uh, take short bites you know, of spiritual intakes. Okay, and then sat, uh, Sunday, obviously Sunday mornings and Sunday afternoons. So here, what I'm doing here is I'm going to portion the spare time that we have to some of these activities. Okay, non-work related activities. When it comes to family, you have the time after work. When you get home after work, you have that time. Spend that time with the family. And you could even also spend that time uh, on, you can also spend uh, time with family on Saturdays as well and also on Sundays. Then others, that others, I put the social events, that is time with friends, you know, time with friends, uh, weddings, parties, go out, spend time and do some of these things that, uh, that add value to your life because we need, we need friends. We need friends. Who, 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 would, who would add value to our life and who we can also add value to their own lives. Okay? Gym exercising is very important. Very important. We need to exercise our bodies. We need to exercise our bodies. And you can do that on Saturday mornings or even Sunday mornings as well before you come to church. So try to fix times. I'm trying to apportion times, you know. And not just to say you will do that, but Go out and purposely accomplish, accomplish them. Okay? Knowledge acquisition. I keep, I keep emphasizing self-improvement. It's very important because I notice that many of us, we don't want to improve ourselves. And there are so many ways. There are so many ways. Make sure that you are constantly adding to your knowledge. Knowledge of the word of God and knowledge of I mean, whatever, whatever um, uh, industry that you, 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 are, you, you are in or you want to be in, you know, it's important. Some of these activities do not clash. Some of them do not clash. So those ones are easy. But some of them will clash. And that's where you need to prioritize. You know, for example, now, uh, you may say, okay, look, you have a wedding to go to early on Saturday morning and you want to go to the gym. You will prioritize which one do you want to do first. Okay? You prioritize. Okay? And then you can also alternate between activities. You can say, okay, look, I'll do half of this. So instead of doing my gym for one hour, I can do it for 30 minutes and still be able to do something. So you can, you can, do, two, you can do two things at the same time, more or less. And like I said, you can do activities simultaneously. You can spend time with God. Spend time with family at the same time. You can spend time with God, spend time with your friends at the same time. You get, so some of these things you can do together. It's important that you take note of that. Okay. We talked about uh, Evidences of that you have an imbalanced life. Evidences. So some of the things that you begin to see, you know, you can begin to say, yes, there's, there's an imbalance here. You fail to fulfill God's primary purpose for your life. And what is that? And that is to live a God-driven, a spiritual, or spiritually uplifting life. You will, you will find out that you are, you are, you are spiritually stagnant. Or in some situations, you're even decreasing because you're not even spending enough time, spending enough time with God. 
there's the mental and physical ill health. Depression. I know someone who went into depression because of excessive work. Now, if I'm not someone, many people, okay, who went into depression because of too much work and then pressure, pressure from the office. So don't let all that get to you. And that's why we balance, we go out, we spend time with friends. When you do all those things, it takes your mind off the work and the issues surrounding the office. Lack of friends. You, so you begin to, begin to find out that you don't have friends outside the office setting. You don't have friends that are outside of your office setting. That's an indication that there's an imbalance in your work life. Okay, very important. And then you see that your skill set is limited to only what you have learned in the office. That means you've not really self-improved yourself. So these are some evidences of work-life imbalance. Some scripture to guide us. Okay. John 4.34 Understand what your primary purpose is here on earth. Your primary purpose is what? To do God's work. That's what Jesus said. My food, the food I eat is to do God's work. So that is our primary purpose. Let us never forget that. Philippians 2.13 says, we should allow God to have his way in us. Allow God to have his way in us. And then Philippians 2.12 Work out your salvation. So we have to purposely work out to make sure that we have a balanced work life. And with that, I say thank you and God bless. Thank you so much, Dr. Omo Olege. Please, another round of applause for him. I, I've known Dr. for more than 50 years. <laughs> Minus 35 years. <laughs> Thank you. Big words there. Priority, accomplishment, don't copy, a portion, adapt, be dynamic, time management, Make a conscious, I like that, a conscious effort to experience and enjoy God in every activity. And you need friends. My friend is here. I'm talking of no other person than the exo presido, two-time president of the Young Professional Fellowship of this short period. A round of applause for Mr. Tobi Chukumodebe, my very good friend. You need friends. You need friends. I don't joke with Tobi because I know today I'm going to his house. We're going to have a glass of champagne and we're going to celebrate the success of today's event. Um, please put your questions together. Um, just four questions, Max, because we don't want to take your time. Four or five questions, Max. You know? Two, two, two. Two, two. <laughs> no, just two questions for um, Auntie Francis and two questions for Uncle Omar, two, two, please, so we can actually, you know, work with time. So please, if you have a question, okay, before question, I can see, please, can you give a round of applause to Uncle Shegun or back with me, our key mentor in YPF. Uncle, we're glad to have you in our midst. Thank you so much. We appreciate your presence. So please, um, key questions, two, two, and then we move to the next um, item on the agenda. Good afternoon. I guess it's afternoon already. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, my name is Organeta Gaumarwai. And my question is going. <laughs> I'm going to be asking my, my sister a question again. Okay. Um, my question is on relationship, right? We talk about relationship a lot, and it sounds like it's, a, um, it's not it's easy to just keep people around you. Now, we want to grow our spiritual life. And you tend to have every class of person around you. And then you, you tend to want to live the God life in the sense that you look at what the Bible says. And um, people around you, now Christians, not, not anybody. 
or um, yeah, Christians, so-called born-again people around you, they are living opposite of it. And then you want to stand your ground that what it is, it's what you want to live a life of um, the, what, the, what the word says, not what the world thinks. There's so much of dilution of the world right now. How do you manage relationship with, in a circle where you seem like you're always wanting to be? They, they deem it like you're always right. But when you go through the world, you see that, I mean, this is what the world says. Why are we comfortable with trying to manipulate it to, um, to make it easy for us to, to um, commune, to live together? I hope you understand what I'm trying to say, ma'am. Thank you. Another question. Or do, you, do you want to answer? Please. Okay. Another question? Okay. Please make it snappy. Good morning. My name is Mary. Okay, I'm talking in respect of um, if you're an outgoing person and you have a friend that doesn't really go out, she doesn't make friends, and she sees you as a bad person, like you're always going out, you don't have a plan. Because you go out a lot, it means that you don't have a plan. But she that's always in the house, she feels like I'm the best and I have a plan for my life. So in years to come, I'm going to be better than you. So in that kind of situation, if you find yourself, what will you do? Good question. Okay, so we, we allow um, Auntie Frances answer the two and then we take another two. Okay, so the, the first one, I'll take out. Um, the truth about it is, is that a lot of times we think that it's in our power to change people. We want to, um, you know, try to get people to become us or to, um, you know, um, we, we think as like, like Christians, it's, it's in our power to get people to love Christ, to do, you know, what we are doing. But honestly, it's not by power, it's not by might. It's by the spirit of God. We can only model who we are in Christ. The Bible says that we should be the light. It does not say we should talk the light. So we are shining, we are acting the light, right? If they see that the way you are living resonates and it's the way of Christ, most likely they will flow with you. But when you, tr when you try to be critical, when you try to, um, you know, explain, over explain this Christian thing, you yourself might even look like a, a hypocrite. You understand? So I've come to realize, especially at work or anywhere I am, that I can only but do my best by being Christ, being like Christ, working towards being like Christ. Honestly, I'm not perfect, so I try not to judge people too much. Um, and that's what I'll say. So for me, I would say, please try as much as possible to model Christ and if your light is shining, most likely they will come around and they will, you know, accept, you know, the Christ in you. Then the other um, sister, um, I'll tell you something. You and Christ, you are together. You need to know who you are. What is your identity as a, as a child of God? Some people are made to socialize. Some people are quiet. Um, the, we're all God's children. God loves those that are, he has made to be exuberant, that go all around, they're jovial, they're excited. And there are some people, they have a melancholic attitude. They just want to be on their own. I call those people sometimes they have an orphan spirit, right? They don't really, they're not out there. But it doesn't make them bad. It's their nature, right? But some of us, we are the bubbly type. Wherever we are, people are looking at us. It's okay. As long as you know who you are, as long as you know that you are safe in Christ and that you are becoming, then if anybody feels you are something else, the person thinks you're not going to make it, blah, 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 what's your business? It's the person that loves you that matters. It's not the people that complain about you that matters. So you focus on people that do not drain your energy, criticizing you. You need to sit down with people that understand who you are and encourage you to become, to fulfill, and to get better. 
if you know what I mean. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, but the people that criticize you, especially when you know they don't have it, what's your business really with them? You don't really have any business. So even if you are, you are all together, right, you don't have any business explaining who you are. You, the only business you have is with God Almighty who knows you, Abba Father who loves you so much and understands how lovely you are and how beautiful and how kind and how, you know, um, of a you know, nice person that you are that socializes everywhere. He knows. Abba Father loves you like that. Have I answered? Thank you very much, Ma. Um, okay. Um, just to quickly say that part of this seminar and networking event, we have an exhibition stand outside. So please, when we are rounding up, make sure you visit that exhibition stand. Very important. And also to quickly say that in our church this year, we started our harvest season the harvest of divine multiplication and we have in our midst uh, 2022 harvest coordinator please a round of applause for mr Bila adeoye thank you sir for honoring us and being our midst we appreciate you so just to also let you know that mba you think my main master of business administration but in in church of resurrection mba means mr Bila adeoye thank you once again we appreciate you. Okay, two more questions and we move to the next. Two more questions. I'm sorry. I know we have a lot of questions. All right, good afternoon. My name is Coco Camden. Okay, I just want to ask you, sir, please. Um, is it a must that we must make friends or we must have friends? That's just a question I have. Please, quiet, please, quiet. No, ask your question. No, ask again, please. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Rosemi. Um, I have a, a comment, and later I'll ask a question to Mrs. Francis. Um, I'll just take the comments first by asking every one of us here. Please, I want everybody to pay attention. Um, just off the top of our head, where you work or wherever you do your business, can anybody raise up their hand if your boss has taken you to the hospital before? You are sick, you come to your boss, I'm not feeling fine. And they took you to the hospital. Anybody? One. Out of how many are we? Your boss is a good person. And I must comment. I think we should give your boss a round of applause. Where I'm going to is that your health is very, very key. Very, very important. Thank God Vika is not here. Sometimes when we go to our revered fathers, they pray for us and some of all that, all of those things. But sometimes our health is very, very important and we need to pay attention to our health. There's a way your body works. When it gets to a particular limit, you know that you cannot continue anymore. And God forbid, if per adventure the person dies at work, oh, the person works hard. And in a few days, you get replaced and that's the end of the story. You've labored many years. Your children, your spouse your family, they don't get to reap, sometimes, sometimes, they don't get to reap the benefits of all the hard work that you've put into it. I'm just trying to paint a picture so that it can sink in. That's one. Then secondly, like you said, Mrs. Francis, you have a boss that um, doesn't resume on time. This happens a lot. Doesn't resume on time. You resume at 8, your boss resumes like 10, 11. And he or she is on the phone for the next 3, 4 hours doing personal work. Then your boss actually starts work at around 3 or 4. And you have to close at 5. How do you respectfully say, sir, madam, I have to go at 5 without being rude 
or getting into trouble with HR. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm so sorry we can't take all of the questions, even though we're not going to leave here today. Um, so please, uh, apologies. So please, Uncle, you answer and then. Okay, yeah, you, you asked the question that um, can we do without friends or. Sh I, I don't know, I think it's impossible. You need friends. You need relationships, you need friends. You go out and have friends. Jesus had friends. And Jesus is who wants to relate. So please, if you're not having friends, go out and have friends. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, you know, I can, that resonates because um, I had that problem. And when I was much younger, where I had a, a boss that, you know, was um, <laughs> never leaving the office um, or never working when she should and all that. And uh, basically, what I could do was just pray. I really, I really, really prayed my eyes out. I cried and really prayed, right? Because it was an environment that I couldn't really do much, right? But guess what happened? People were watching and they saw how terrible she was treating me. And they divided that department into two and gave me one part of it. Do you understand? So, and I think it was because I prayed. I prayed so much that God had to come down to remove that department, to divide that department into two. But practically speaking, right, sometimes you can parley your boss. Like now I'm older. And I have a young person that normally likes to leave early. And what she started to do was to talk to me um, about other things. She started to tell me about her problems, how she needs to be going home early, blah, blah, blah. After like one month of toasting me, she just came one day and said, Ah, mother, you know all those things I've been telling you, see, I don't think I can be working more than this time. And honestly, I had, she had gotten to me. She had really gotten to me. So there are and I think she used wisdom. So sometimes we need wisdom from God to hand, handle people. You don't have one size fit all. You handle people differently. And it also depends on your threshold of tolerance. I had a t threshold of tolerance. Every, people, I was crying to God, but nobody knew. Everybody thought I loved this woman with all my heart. Right? Uh, so you have to manage it and ask for wisdom. And if you need to talk to her, go talk to her after praying, and I'm sure she would listen. That's my, do you have any suggestion? <laughs> yeah, let, let me just say, make a little comment about relationships. God blesses people through relationships, through friends, through men, through women. You know, so sometimes we ask, Father Lord, you know, send help us to me. I honestly do not think that anybody can do without friends. It's impossible. You need, if, if, if maybe you're not asking because of yourself, you're asking because of somebody, it's critical to have friends. It is so critical that if any of us here, we do not have friends that maybe we need help or somebody throws us out of the house, some, you know, and we need a shelter of ours and we don't have somebody, we, you, you need to go for deliverance. You must have friends for everything. You must have friends that you read maybe to help in your spiritual growth. You must have friends to you party with. People that if you want a one party, they can arrange all those things for you. you. If you need to have friends that can, you know, um, be with you in the place of problems. Do you understand? If I need money today, I should have one or two friends that I can call. And do you know what I'm talking about? If you don't oh, analyze your life, oh. It is important there's, there's something wrong. Jesus Christ had the closest disciples to him. He also had many other people that were following him. Do you understand? And you do not give all your friends the same kind of honor. Your different friends have different kinds of honor. So friendship is, like I said it, your network is your net worth. I, I left a job under one week because of friendship. I, I told my former boss, I said, you know what, I am leaving this job now and I need another job. He got it for me. 
How do you do that if you've not kept relationships? If you've not sustained a relationship for over 20 years or 15 years? You must be intentional, deliberate. It's not because you are using people. It's a, it's a system of comfort that God has built into us that we must nurture and midwife. Chai, there's so much wisdom in this woman. You have so much wisdom. Are you sure I won't come and understudy you? Can you give it up for her, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sure we've had a wonderful time here today. I've had a wonderful time. Okay, you've had a wonderful time. Can you come and tell me what you're going to take away from here today? Thank you. In one minute. Ah, you, 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 you are forcing me, or you are making me to say this early. Okay, thank you very much. Doctor, <laughs> I am waiting for your slides, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I saw you bring a framework of operations management into work-life balance, and I was like, these things connect. Um, that slide, the big picture, God, family, and it was like I photographed it. I'm going to go back. I'm going to put it on the table. I'm going to sort of like study it. I'm going to see the connection. I like the fact that there are some things that are exclusive. I like the fact that there are some things um, that you can do to, together. And I see that as a life improvement framework. Let me not say more, much more. <laughs> Um, we get to say much more later, but I think I'm living with that. And thank you very much, Ma. It was very practical. Um, when you were speaking, I didn't write. I kept, I just want those things to come in. Some of those things we've known before. But you know, some of those things, when you hear them in a new dimension, um, it sort of like help, it sinks in. Thank you very much, you both. Uh, thank you for giving me this privilege. <laughs> thank you very much. You know, I, had, I, I, I needed to give him the microphone because, you know, when doctor was speaking, I could see him in doctor. He's so much like you, doctor. He's so much like you. And I knew somebody needed to come and say thank you to doctor. That is equally a doctor saying thank you to a doctor. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogunleye. Thank you. Okay, so I need a female. Okay, I'll just do something. Let me give it to Mrs. Ogunleye. Let them have it. It's their family affair. Take. Oh, yeah. Talk. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Just like my husband said um, earlier. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. But short, uh, Mrs. Adig, okay, can you permit me to quickly add to what, um, answer that um, man there? Sorry. Just to add to what you said. She said something very, very important. And I think for younger ones at work right now, you need to manage your boss, not the other way around. Did you get that? You need to manage your boss. She said something that the lady kept on telling, I, don't, I can't even remember whether it was a lady or a guy, has been toasting her, toasting her. And by the time she dropped the card, there was nothing she could do. But I think for a lot of us, as in for younger ones, when you come to the office, there's this right, there's this something about that generation that you can't talk to me like that. A lot of us have done mass. And today we are there. We have, it's like she talked about faces in life. We will all get there. But there's always a starting point. But I noticed that the younger ones now, they, what is mass? No, they don't want to do that. But remember that you are also building, you are also sowing. I pray that you don't have a generation worse than this. Because, no, I, I, it's a prayer. Because there are times that they throw some things and I'm like, what is this? In fact, I notice that a lot of the bosses manage them now. Not the other way around the way we manage our bosses. And another thing I want to say, a lot of us, you get to a, a workplace now. You find out that your colleagues are working late or your boss is working late and you feel that is the norm. No. You don't even know the reason why that person is working late. A lot of time is eye service. You just, you don't want, if I go and I don't know what he will say. My boss like working late. Why? Because he stays at Shongotedo and I heard that traffic wise, he's bad. Once is five 
I shut down because I have a family and there's a pending file. There will forever be a pending file. So please be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. Be, she said something about integrity. Do your work. Apportion time to it. I'm a compliance officer. I apportion time to it. I give myself, if I'm dealing with corresponding banks, I need one hour. Once I'm done with one hour, I move to something else. I need to attend to EFCC. After one hour, I move to CBN. I need to apportion your time. And it will be well with all of us in Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. Thank you. Thank you very much. Microwave age. May God deliver us for microwave age, Joe. Thank you. Thank you. It's actually been an awesome time today. You know, when I was told that I was going to be the anchor person, you know, I was kind of excited because um, I love being in the midst of um, young people. I also love to learn from people's experiences. And I'm taking so much home this afternoon. And I know that I'm going to definitely make a change or an improvement in my life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, I'd like you all to put your hands together for our speakers. They've done wonderfully well. They've answered our questions very well. We're going on with so much. We're going on with so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Like our diocesan will say, if you want to clap, clap. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you audience, you've been so amazing. Please give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite a 2000, okay, 2022 Harvest Coordinator, Mr. MBA to come and say special thank you to our speakers. Please keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of the YPF, uh, we'd like to thank you very much, Ma, and thank you very much, sir, uh, for coming to speak with us today. Um, somebody said they didn't write. They were trying to drink everything. Um, when I received the, the flyer, I knew I had to be here, although I got back home from, you know, meetings this morning. Uh, but I think that this is not theoretical. This is life. When you go into work on Monday or you step out of here, those are the things you utilize. And from everything you said, you know, sometimes you come and you say, okay, I'm attending something. Am I going to go home with anything tangible? There's so much that I've taken, I've even taken from here. Um, and I'm sure it's because the Holy Spirit has spoken to us through you. So on behalf of everyone, it's my honor and privilege to uh, thank you very much for the time you've spent with us. We pray that the Almighty will replenish you. Uh, the store from which the wisdom and the uh, impartation came, it will be refilled, and your life would continue to be an icon and a reflection of God's glory for all of us to benefit from, and yourselves as well. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay. So, uh, if you don't mind, please, uh, on behalf of the YPF, this is for you. On behalf of the YPF, sir. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, our speakers. We appreciate. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll be rounding up in the next 10, 15 minutes. We're done and we'll go to the exhibition stand. Please, um, I want you to give. We're about to have the raffle draw for those who came early. I came here at 6 30. I got you at 6.30. I think it was in my dream. It was in my dream. I woke up. I said, good, I'm late. All right. Um, I'd like us to welcome the two-time president of the Young Professional Fellowship of the Church of the Resurrection. The YPF was inaugurated in 2016 in this church. And we had our first ever president. And God has been using him to bless us. So he's going to Take charge 
of the raffle drop. Please, a round of applause for our exo presido, Mr. Tobechuku Modebe. Thank you, my Oga. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Um, there's, uh, we're short of time. I would have wanted to ask uh, two questions because the speakers are, uh, are known to me, you know. Um, so I was hoping someone would have asked those questions. I, and I asked someone at the back, I said, work-life balance. There's um, a post-COVID work-life balance that we didn't address where, in fact, Madam Frances, I remember the first time we spoke, it was via uh, the Teams, Microsoft Teams. We had a meeting, and we see ourselves having meetings back to back to back to back over time. Sundays, the client calls us and says, oh, we have a Zoom meeting by 8 p.m. in the night. So at that point, what am I meant to say? Am I meant to say, oh, we don't want to have the meeting, or do I just, you know, so these days, weekend self, we're working. God's will is hiding somewhere there. He's with his laptop working. And he's here. And he's listening to this seminar. You know, so these are the things we are talking about. So in your spare time, you may need to address us. But let me just go straight to the business while I'm here. Um, so for the early birds, we decided that we're going to have um, a raffle draw. That's who are the early birds? The people that came here between 9.30 and 10 on the dot. And we have a few of them. Their names are here. So um, at this point, since I will, um, all protocols duly observed, but I will have to call uh, Mr. Shego Obabimi, Uncle Shego Obabimi, to come and help me because I can't hold this and pick as well. Please, can you come forward? So we are going to be picking. Thank you very much. We we'll need your blessed hands to okay. just now hold it. You right. just put inside. So just one at a time. One at a time. So we are going to have um, the first three people. It's a random raffle. We we'll have the first three people, and there's a very very large gift for them. In fact, if you see, there's a bullion van parked outside. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't shake. If you need escort, call me. Okay. So sir, the first name. Daniel Oluwashio. Please, where's Daniel? And, okay, oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down, calm down. Okay, so what will happen is, we'll give you a consolation prize. Please bring the consolation prize. Let us let's give you let's give you a consolation prize. Fairness, fairness, equity. Well, it ha I understand your point of view. There has to be equity. Yeah. So let's go. Please attention. Please let's go to the second. Uh, let's go to the first person now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Please come and take your consolation. Okay, so now, uh, for clarity's sake, um, members of the committee and all Lagoon TV uh, staff and rep are exempted from this. Uh, I beg, see us, see us in the other room. We will sort you out. Okay. So the so the first person. Nima Adeyemo. <laughs> what, what, what is happening here? I think these Lagoon TV guys have done something to us. I hope we are not at Eagle Square this morning. Honestly. 
So number one again. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Adeni Bolajoko. Okay. Finally. <laughs> Third time lucky, I suppose. You can take a handshake and move over there and get, let them take your details. Congratulations. Oh no, so um, he has a voucher for 20,000 Naira. La, La, Lagoon, Lagoon TV will see in the other room. Don't shout too much. No violence. Okay. Number two. <laughs> Christopher of Asi. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes. Hey, but no, no, no. He's, he's not an organizing committee member. Please. Please. Come forward. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so please, your details over there. Okay. And finally. All right. Unzube Chuku Okozie. Okozie. Brother Unzube. Okay. We'll, we'll, put, we'll put Brother Unzube aside. Unzube, you see? All you men of God, you have a way of uh, we've, manipulating things in the spirit. We've, ma we've had more rules amendment than APC and PDP convention. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> Rookie mother. <laughs> So for those that don't understand, that is my wife. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll roll, I'll roll it a, lot, a, lot, a lot longer this time. Let so number see. three, number three again. Okay. Or more tire, I can hear me. Don't worry, calm down, don't worry, we understand. <laughs> calm down, calm down, no violence, calm down. <laughs> no, no worry. We, we will keep trying, we'll get there, we're almost there. It's just one more. Again, I take a Omar Raye. Ah, sorry. Can we get? No, no, no. She's okay. Getting the, she's the oh, final. Oh, okay. Congratulations. Number three. Thank so please, your details over there. Thank you. So um, we will so we will now go for two consolation prizes. Um, so let the best man win. A woman in this place. A woman. Okay. Omo tayo agedo. Yes. Thank you. 
And finally, the last consolation prize goes to the very lucky person. Let the best man or woman win. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, my baby. Uh, so, Lagoon TV came prepared today. They've taken everything. So, please. Yeah, this is the last person. So, um, okay. thank you everyone for... So, the idea of this was to encourage early participation, you know, and all. And I'm sure it really did. And it's not... We, if we had enough gifts to go around, we would have given as many gifts as possible. But please accept us as we are. Thank you, Mr. Sheck. Uh, Alfred. And thank you, our uncles. Over to you. Thank you very much. Can you please give it up for him, for Tobe? That does not mean that some of us did not come early. You. Me, I came early. I came here five minutes past nine, so I deserve to win. <laughs> thank you very much. I'd like to invite the coordinator, Engineer Ladotson, please. Thank you very much. If you have enjoyed yourself today, I want you to put your hands together for the Lord. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I will be doing uh, something very briefly. I'm going to be very brief about it. I think the ambassadors in the house, they are aware. Okay, as a matter of fact, please let all the ambassadors stand up and let's celebrate them. These are the people who are driving this vision in the parishes. Please let them stand up. Please let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. Let's celebrate them. These are the people who are driving the vision in the there is not going to be any diocesan YPF without these people you are seeing standing up. Please, let's celebrate them very well. Thank you. Thank you. Please, as a matter of fact, join me up here as we want to do this together. Let's do this together. Thank you. Let the ambassador in the house join me. Please, the ambassador, don't let me call your name. You know, I said we are fighting before. So come now. You want me to call your name? We are still looking. <laughs> Finally, she's coming. Okay. We'll do this thing together very. Uh, very fast. You know, we are thorough professional and we think that it's, there is need for us to brand, to brand this movement. And then uh, today, these people are the ones that are going to drive this thing down to the various parishes. But we'll be doing something today and uh, as a matter of fact, the, you know, only two days ago, I thought of some people that I know. I know few people anyway, as a matter of fact. And I personally invite them because I know they belong to our fold. And I'm glad that they are here today. You know, we, we've spoken about Mr. Beulia Adeoye, we spoke about Mr. Obafemi, Obag uh, Mr. Femi Obagwemi. It's Obafemi, sir. I'm right. Yes, I'm right, Mr. Obafemi. I want to sincerely appreciate you. I sent them personal message and I said they need to be here. And you won't believe it. You say, okay, fine, we'll be there. They register and they are here. We are very happy and we are so glad that you are in our midst because these are the kind of caliber of people we are projecting. You have seen. Dr. Lega, in short, I'll go and listen to that thing again because I was running up and down. But I will listen to it again. What he has been able to dish that to us in this place today. And one of the reasons why we are bringing this type of people is so that we know that we are blessed in our communion. So that we know people. In short, I will leave you to go and check out the profile of these people I've just mentioned also. In short, and you will see that we are sincerely, we are sincerely blessed. Check it out yourself. I won't tell you more than that. Check it out. They are not mere men. They are men that God has helped in their life. So thank you. I'm not putting them on the spot. But as a matter of fact, it is this set of people I want them to... We have come up with a, with a, with a, with a brand for ourselves. This thing will go... Thank you, sir. This thing will go around all our parishes. We have sent messages to the ambassador. Though I'm also very aware that maybe some of the ambassador... Maybe some of the ambassador did not get back to you. Sorry about that one. But, but I will be, I will be, in short, our two speakers first, they will come. It's, a, it, it's the first thing we are doing to brand ourselves. Do you like this thing you are seeing in my hand? It looks very fat. Do you like it? Do you like it? It's so beautiful. I'm telling you, by the time it gets to you, you see that it's so beautiful. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, we will be selling it. That's the good news. It will be sold. It's a, it's a good news. It's a good news. It will be sold. To, to Ross, and, but you can be very sure that it's going to be at a very friendly price. 
we want to do honor to 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 these people who are in, who are in our midst and then we want them to 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 come forward to be the first set of people that will pick this thing i want them to tell them to tell us what they are giving us but i know them and i know that they will do something good i'm not putting them on the spot as a matter of fact uh, but we want to do that honor to them you know one of the things we have told ourselves in ypf is that we want to learn the principle of giving honor to whom it is due see these people you are seeing here standing here if I tell you their profile also, forget about the fact that they are here. If I tell you their profile, they are people that have been helped by God. And I'm very sincere about it. But they just love God. And together, we have told ourselves that we will build our church. Some of the people we lost was because we don't give them their place. These people who are spoken to us today, they are our members. But in the past, we want to do things like this. We go and bring people from wherever. As if we don't have people here. No, we said it's changing. Those are kind of the things we are changing. That we have them. What do you need? Ask me, what do you need? That you won't find in this communion. There is nothing. There is nothing. So that's part of the thing. It is deliberate that everyone that has come to speak to us in our program, so 99% of them have been from within our church. Please clap for yourself. Because I know we are the ones stepping up and taking all those places and, and taking it over. So I will be calling our two speakers. I will be talking, calling Mr. Bafemi, and I will be calling Mr. Bella to please come and be the first set of people we are going to be they are going to be picking this brand and they are going to i know they will wear it so that when when mr bella uh, go to you know he just came from meeting this morning so the next one will go no don't go to anyone tonight to come back tomorrow morning because we need it in church tomorrow don't forget don't go to anyone but when you go on monday they will see this band somebody will say ah, sir what is that will say that is young professional fellowship of the anglican communion you are welcome it's not the anglican movement alone we welcome people from everywhere. You need to understand that one also. So please, want to do you that honor? It's a privilege. I mean, it's our. It's what we have thought of that we want to do you that honor to be the first set of people to pick. I'm sure I've not even touched it myself before. <laughs> Only now. So to be the first set of people that he's going to own this thing, and we know you will wear it because it is our own. So please, ma. They say, ladies first. Thank you very much. Ma, please go ahead. Feel free, ma. It, uh, just pick your own one. About this one that would uh, ask you to pick. And then. But you know, I can't take one now. Daddy. Oh. Daddy, ma, don't. And I listen to you very well from it. So please take two. That's excellent. Thank you very much, ma. That's excellent. That's very good. That's fine. Right? That's, that's fine. Like I said, I know that whatever thing you want to do, you can easily get across to us and tell us you want to. Anything that comes to your mind. I'm not putting anybody on the spot, really. It's, it's excellent. So, my own brother, Dr. Omogba, is that doing this program? I know that there is guy. I've always known him as Dr. Omo Olege. Is mommy still in the house? Mommy brought him this morning. Is mommy still in the house? Oh, she has gone. Okay. I know you are picking two also. You are picking four. For our son. Oh, excellent. So please go ahead, sir, and take the four. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. No problem. It's fine. It's excellent. Yes, Mr. Obafemin. Thank you very much for honoring this video. I invited him only two days ago. That needs to be on. Here is he must be for my sister also. Uh, okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Much. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Okay, sir. The floor is all yours. Okay, MBA. Excellent. Okay, yes, you must stay for myself. Thank you very much. That's excellent. And I need to announce to us that we made so much to go around, but the so much is still on the way. So what we are going to do is that through the ambassador, you are going to register. The ambassador will tell us how many they want, and we get it to you in your parish. We have intended to sell it for so for a token. Sister Jimmy, so how much are we selling it? It's just a token, 2,000 naira. But of course, you can give us more than that. <laughs> you can give us more than that. Thank you very much. And you know you can buy for people, so you don't have to buy one. You can buy five, you can buy ten, you know. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Please, let us celebrate ourselves. It's all about us. Please, Sister Jimmy, I'll get you. Let's... 
Sure, okay, that's excellent. Please, there is something they are always teaching me. That's why I have this kind of. There's something we always miss at every of our program. We are not missing it this time around in Jesus' name. We must take pictures, okay? Please don't be in annoyed. I know they are taking pictures, but I want to take organized pictures. So they have told me that the ambassador would like to take picture with our speakers. Please, can we just march forward and do that and take the picture, please? I always forget, and it's after the program they will remind me. I don't used to take pictures when I was young. I don't have any picture of when I was young. They don't take it for me, so I'm used to it. <laughs> Okay, they say you should sit down so we'll come around you. So, yes, you should sit down so we'll come around you. I, photographer, please, can you advise? This is your, no, we I, want I, them to sit down. No, I, I think they should stand. They should sit down. No, no, let, the later, let them. They said they want them to sit down. Okay, fine, it's okay. We'll come around them. It's no, okay. photographer, please. We want them to stand as amazing speakers and let's stand beside them and tap that anointing. Then they can later sit. Please, our speakers, a round of applause for them. Please come. Yeah, then we surround them. Yes. This is better. Please, um, organizing committee for this event, please. You can also come forward, please. So that the picture will be nice. Let's take this one, then the world. Please give your best smile, please. Okay. Please let them have their seat. People still want that where they are sitting now. Okay. And the photo. Okay, Ma, please go ahead and, and have your seat. Why would come around them? No, no, we want to take another one. Where they sit. Please, sis, ma, sis, please sit down. Okay, is there any member of the planning, please, please, the planning committee now, please come around and then, uh, the planning committee very fast. Thank you very much. Please make sure you show in our pictures. Okay, thank you. I think in another two minutes, I just want to... Yes. Yes, thank you very much. So I'm moving ahead straight away to just say thank you to, to every one of us. Okay, thank you. Okay. Very briefly, I want to say thank you to everyone of you. You are the reason why this program has held, because you left your home and you are here today. We want to say thank you and we appreciate you. And like I said during my, during my welcoming charge, I've told us our quarter three program is coming and we will, we will be duly informed when the time comes. So please put it in mind and be part of this, of this meeting. And I also want to thank us all for our attendance today. This is very, very encouraging. We can do more. Every of our program, we have always been planning and uh, over-dimensioning. We still did that today again. 
But I'm hoping that one day we will dimension and you will come and uh, you will beat our imagination. So I want to say thank you to everyone. And once again, permit me to thank especially the vicar of this church, my own very vicar, Venerable John Agboro. He was here with us in the beginning of the program. John was here for a very long time. And I want to say sincere thank you to him. He has supported us. We have this all to use. We, I told you that they gave us cash also towards this program. And I want to say thank you to everyone. I want to thank the ambassadors. I want to thank the planning committee. A lot of meetings uh, went into this program. A lot of meetings in the night, in the afternoon, a lot of chats, a lot of people are asked to do things and then they will not blink. They just okay, don't worry, brother, so we are on it. And I've also told us, I didn't chair this committee, it was deliberate. We, we took a back seat and we allowed the ambassador to plan it. And is this not beautiful? I need your Is it beautiful? Please, can you put your hands together for yourself? And that brings me to the, what I always say. We that are in the central committee, we are not there because we are better than you. It's just because all of us will not be there. And that is why deliberate, in short, the first quarter program was not planned by us. We only supported those who planned it also. This one also was not planned by the, the assistant committee. It was planned by all of us, the ambassador. In short, some people are not even ambassadors. They join in the planning. So we will reach out to you. It's our Jerusalem. Let us build it together. Once again, thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. He has said thank you. I'm also going to say thank you to you. Thank you. You've been very, very amazing. I've had the most um, beautiful day today. Thank you. And so I'd like to invite Reverend Innocent Gigi. Reverend Innocent Gigi. Thank you very much. Can you put your hands together for him? He was supposed to have given us the opening prayer, but he said he was going to wait to take the closing prayer. Thank you very much, sir. Please, let's stand to our feet. For all the Lord has done in our midst this afternoon. Thanks, oh, thanks, Father, we give you thanks. For all you have done in our life, we are so blessed, we are so blessed. Our souls have found rest, oh Lord, we give you thanks. And so, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We honor you. We thank you for this privilege to gather once again before you. Father, to learn at your feet. We want to thank you for our guest speakers that you used as an instrument to speak to us. Our Lord and our God, we want to return all praise and glory to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask in your name that all that we have heard and all that we have believed and learned today, Father, give us the grace to put them into practice in the name of Jesus. Father, also we ask in your name concerning our guest speakers lord virtue has gone out of them we ask that you will strengthen and fill them the more in the name of jesus father lord as we depart we're not departing from your presence we ask of thee that your presence will go forth with us that in all things we shall do let it be to the glory of your name even the planning committee yes lord they have put in effort to make sure that this program went well Lord God, I ask in your name that you bless them and bless them abundantly in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our diocese and for the vision of creating this young professional fellowship. And we pray that this vision will not die in the name of Jesus. Be thou exalted and glorified. Hallowed be your name for having answered our prayers even more than we've asked of thee. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. As one family, let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And the people will say...
Amen. Okay, so please, you can still have photographs going on. Um, if you want to snap with the speakers, they're still here. And then, as you're going downstairs, don't forget to visit the exhibition stand. Very, very important. Please, and make sure you buy an item. And we also like to thank Lagoon TV. Please, a round of applause for Lagoon TV. We appreciate your presence. Thank you for always coming for all our programs. All right, DJ, please play us something nice. Okay, um, DJ, DJ, just take it low. Okay, so please, um, if you want to have any photographs, please, you can do it snappy. Then we'll all go downstairs. Please don't forget to visit the exhibition stand. Very important. And make sure you pick an item. Make sure you pick an item. Thank you. Photographer, where is the photographer, please? Make sure you visit the exhibition stand. Very important, please. Very important. DJ, just a bit. We have some people who have been selected for interviews. Please just make sure you stay behind for the for the interview, please. Make sure you stay behind for the interview. Downstairs. Exo.
the stone of where is Elkena? Somebody should please call Elkena. How do we put up the ACs? Look for Elkena. Yeah, put up the ACs. Put up all the ACs. I don't know what's spelling. Make sure you visit our exhibition stand. Thank you.